Alrighty, hello, hello everybody, this is Kirusho here. Now then, let us begin. Whenever we last left off, Deku, he had just gotten a surprise attack from All for One, which he was not expecting, actually getting impaled through one of his lungs. Now, with that being said, let us continue. The last thing Deku saw before he passed out was his dad's silhouette disappear, and he heard a loud boom. Now, let us pick up at the hospital. Deku, he, he's in a coma right now. He's been in a medically induced one for about a week. It is one of the safest ways for his body to heal right now since the trauma from him moving and sometimes having his nightmares, from what they've heard, they can be somewhat violent. Along with the fact that his cork float basically means that they had to strap him down to the bed. So, it was a bit tricky. However, Deku, he is waking up today. And he would actually wake up to find that he's in a hospital bed. Or exactly is he? Well, that's a bit confusing. Now, Deku, he would go to move, as he feels pressure on his chest and a sharp pain. Now, Deku, he would look down to see that Todoroki, she is sleeping next to him, which he is a bit confused by. He then turns his head to see that it's, well, in the morning. Exactly where is he? As he would somewhat try and move and at least shift his body. As he does so, Toroki should wake up and look up at him. She would immediately realize exactly what's going on as she shakes off her fatigue and immediately just starts by telling him that, hey, hey, take it easy. You put a lot of strain on your body. What's going on? Where are we? You're in the hospital. After the fight with All for One, as Deku would somewhat open his eyes a bit more, trying to actually get out of bed, saying that he needs to go help. No, no, listen, listen, it's okay. Look at me. Look at me. The fight's over. What? But it's... <sighs> Damn it. Okay. But, what happened last night? Last night? Oh, um, you mean last week. What? You've been in here for a week. Which would surprise Deku. Now, she would continue explaining exactly what happened. Whatever All Might did, he basically broke and shattered his cork. Since after he got stabbed and taken away, All Might disappeared on screen continuing to dismantle and actually take apart the villain. The villain actually had to be, well, on life support for a while. In Tartarus. They think he's going to be in life support for the rest of his life. Along with that, your dad may have gone over a few guidelines of the Hero Association. What? He almost killed that man. Hmm. I mean... As... Deku would still not be not sure what to say. He wants to say that the man deserves it, but even then, that might not be true. Death is not something you can just wish on someone. To which, Toroki can see his frustration. As All Might would walk in, Deku can see that the light behind his eyes is gone. He doesn't have that spark there. As Deku just stares at his dad for a second. Someone looking down. As his eyes tear up. As he would just say that he failed. No, my boy. Now, Deku, he would then look up. As his dad said that no, no you didn't. Listen to me, my son. You are the 
greatest thing I've ever created. The greatest choice I've ever made. Besides, there's someone here that wants to see you. As Todoroki would somewhat climb off of him. And actually stand up and stretch. As Inko would walk in. She would just walk over to the bed and give Deku a hug. And as Deku would ask her exactly how she's doing. To where she would actually form somewhat of a sentence. Saying, doing better. Just time. Problem. Hmm. Well, okay, Mom. As long as you're getting better, that's all, that's all that matters. Now. With that, Deku would actually be able to stand up and at least stretch his legs. Then I'm telling him to take it easy. But, you know, he's not going to listen. Now then. With that being said, Deku, he would be checked out of the hospital, as they would have gone back to UA. All Might, he is still going to be a teacher there, and just that now he is considered to be corkless. But he is still left very, very powerful, since he does keep the physicality of his buff form. Now, with that being said, Class 1A would welcome him back, as they would somewhat throw a party and start talking. Everyone's saying that things are going to be a bit different. Without the number one hero, or the number two hero, the world might change a little, but not for the worse. Endeavor was kind of already in charge, but things shouldn't be too bad. Now then, with that being said, Deku, he would have gotten back in class. Aizawa, somewhat explaining to him what happened and what he's going to have to make up. As the big three would introduce themselves. Deku sees Tamaki, Nejire, and Mirio. Mirio is somewhat actually running up to Deku and immediately just, well, shaking his hand and talking to him with a very energetic spirit. He just goes on saying that it's very nice to meet you and he's always been a big fan of his dad. But hey, you're pretty cool too, man. To where Deku would somewhat actually just say thank you. But exactly what's going on? Well, we're the big three. And Mr. Aizawa actually wanted to meet you guys. So, here, listen, um, are, are most of your injuries healed? Well, I mean, yeah, but why? Well, I really want to test to see where all you guys stand. You see, I bet I can beat all of you. Hmm? Really? Um, I'm not too sure about that, man. Well, what do you mean? Well, I kind of do have two quirks, along with the fact I can kind of fly. Well, I guess we'll just see about that then. As Tomoki just somewhat head is over there headbanging the wall, trying to tell Miria that he needs to calm down. We've seen the power that kid's displayed, remember? Yeah, yeah, I know, I'm just I'm really excited to see it. As they would all change into uniforms. And head out there. Now, with a. Everyone would change. As they would all walk out and meet Mario on the battlefields. Deku and Todoroki, they get ready. Deku wants to see exactly where this guy lies, or well, he's working at. Thinking that if he can take him down, then. The rest would be easy. Because he seems like the main problem, but what exactly is his quirk? It's not a mutation, it's not anything like that, so let's see. As Deku can see scars on his arms. So is it an enhancement? That's gotta be it, right? Hmm. Now, 
This is when Renegere, she would have moved forward and actually fly up into the air. As Tomoki would also move forward. These two actually saw it joining in the fight this time. Thinking that Class 1A is actually strong. Well, Mirio someone just watches this happen. He wants to see exactly if they can beat those two, then he won't really intervene. Since they kind of did have a bit of a plan for this class. Now, this is where Deku would meet Najure in aerial combat. She actually does fight against him. Somewhat being surprised whenever Deku, he actually does use one for all. And the sparks start to fly around him. He would have been able to dodge her spirals and actually move around them. Her being surprised exactly how much control he has in the air. And the fact that anytime he does throw a punch or well meet her with her spirals, he would actually break one of her support gauntlets. And somewhat beat her to the ground. Basically just using his hands, bring them over his head and smashing them. While hitting her over hers. As she would have been sent flying into the ground. After that, Tamaki, he is fighting with Bakugo, Karashima, and some more of Class 1A. As I want to say, they could actually take him down. Bakugo could use his explosions to try and get in close and distract him. Karashima also doing the same thing, however he could take on most of the damage. Well, whenever those two do break away, Jiro and Todoroki... They could use their quirks to basically encase them in ice and a wall of sound. Disorienting them as... Ugh. Kaminari could release a million volts. And fry him. Or at least, knock him out. So that is how Class 1A would somewhat win. As it would all turn to Mirio. They get ready to face off against him, and Deku he would watch as... He is about to start flying in. But that's whenever... Yeah. Mario turns on his quirk. Somewhat confusing them all. As he goes into the ground, and... And comes up, basically across the arena. Completely... Well, in his birthday suit. As he would also just start using his quirk to permeate through the ground and actually knock out and take down most of Class 1A. As I want to say some of the other ones remaining are about... Todoroki, Deku, Bakugo, Kirishima, and I want to say... Hmm. Yeah, would he be able to get Invisible Girl? That's my question. Because... Yeah, no, I want to say she would go down. She's not even in this class, actually. Never mind. But, yeah. He would take down most of the people. And those ones that are left, that I named, are having a lot of trouble. Deku, he would have come down. As him and Todoroki are some of the last remaining. As he just saw Bakugo get taken out with a gut punch and punched across the face. Kirishima actually did last a bit longer, but he still got taken down. Todoroki, she just blasting on ice and fire all over the place. Deku just thinking that she is able to stay up because, well, he's not expecting her to do anything. As he would pop up right behind Todoroki. And she would have immediately been able to turn around and try and counter his punch by grabbing his hand. Mario permeating through her hand and actually doing the thing he did to Deku, where he permeates through the eyes and actually just blinds him. And then go for a kick, then a punch, taking her down. Mario facing off against Class, well, Class 1A's finest student. Now, Deku, he would have been ready, as he would have actually come back down to the ground. Mirio just staring at him. As Deku turns on one for all, and he then rushes forward. Mirio actually seeing this, as Deku shouts one thing. Kaioken! As Deku would have thrown out his leg actually, trying to expect that he would actually kick Mirio. 
Mario would have done one thing. Hmm. That's um pretty cool, but I have a question. As Deku would go to throw more force around him. Mario just dodging and actually just maneuvering around this area. Deku throwing a flurry of punches into his face. Mario just permeating straight through it. What does the Kaioken even mean? As Deku would just say one simple phrase. Kaio crap. And Mario would just go to rush in to attack him. He would gut punch Deku as Deku would have kicked up his knee. Actually somewhat hurting Mirio's arm, if not breaking it. As Mirio would try and use his quirk more. Anytime he nails solid damage on Deku, Deku is able to throw around enough force just to hit whatever solid. And eventually Mirio would have to stop using his quirk, as Deku would just knock him away and send him flying. He would have been able to permeate through the wall, but he would have been solid and hit something outside afterward. As Aizawa would just sigh. Tamaki would walk over, picking up his pants and immediately running outside the, the, the running outside of the area they are sparring in. As everyone someone just gets back up and tries to cheer him on. Through their injuries. Now, after that happens... The Provisional License Exam. Deku, he's a bit confused because he's talking about how the sports festival is a bit different and how it was weird, but they need to make sure that they know exactly what everyone else's quirks are. So, we should all probably try and stick together, right? To which people would have actually agreed on. Deku is saying that he knows that people are immediately going to be aiming for him. They've seen the power I display, so I won't be a target on your guys' back. To which, people would somewhat kind of just nod. Deku is going to use himself as bait, and that's good. Now, with that being said, Deku, he gets ready. As they would walk out of the bus, and, well, they would meet the wind guy, along with every other, every other person. The guy with the targeting cork, which Deku doesn't shake his hand. Since it's a bit weird. He doesn't know his opponent's cork, so this might have something to do with it. They might be tricky. As the guy would somewhat just try shaking one else's. Since Deku didn't do it, they didn't do it. They would have kind of just apologized for that, saying that they're not going to do that. Which would have gotten the guy annoyed. As he would walk into the Provisional Lights exam. Now, for this, everyone would get changed into their hero costumes, and then they are on the battlefield, where they are supposed to basically tag each other out. Deku immediately doing one thing, as he would have flown straight up into the air as high as possible. That everyone can see him at. As everyone just takes targeting aim at him and throws them all, all the balls they can at him. Thing that that should work. One of the, all those have got to hit him. Now, Deku would have done one thing. Turning on the Kaioken to his max level and then turning up one for all. As he would have done so and then flex his entire body. As the shockwaves that come off of him are incredible. Deku just. Well, he's been practicing using the Kaioken. After discovering that he can go up higher than 50, it's a bit crazy. He kind of skipped 60, however, so he's trying to find where that balance is. He would have gotten quite a lot of people out, as classmen would stick together and they would all pass. Now, the rescue portion, Deku does rescue people, rescue people, along with actually using his cape as somewhat of a support blanket. Since if people are complaining about injuries, he just tears the piece of the cape and wraps it around those fake injuries. 
basically to show that they have gotten some medical aid, along with helping them get to the safe area. So he would have gotten quite a good number of points there, along with him actually helping take down Gang Orca in the battle. With Todoroki, and the Wind Guy. The Wind Guy, he would have been a bit hesitant to help Endeavor's daughter, but well, yeah, it's a bit different and tricky. He would have saw that the chick's a bit, well, calm and not like him, so he would have tried complying. And as soon as Deku jumped in and actually smashed Gang Orca across the face, they would have gotten a timeout. Since it has ended. Gang Orca actually being dazed and confused at the punch. Soma just rubbing the area and giving Deku a thumbs up. Which Deku would have immediately smiled at. And Todoroki would have walked over. As Deku would just turn to her and smile. The two walking away. Deku sending a picture to his dad that he got his license. And All Might just showing us off to Inko. As she does, she is doing better in the hospital. She actually did get released. Now, with that happening, they have a bit of a chat. Todoroki having an idea that may be good, but may also be bad. They decide that it would be a good idea to invite the family over for dinner. As Todoroki, she would bring Endeavor and her mom over to All Might's house. Endeavor, he's a bit more calmed down at this. He respects the boy. All Might, however, that's a different story. He respects the man for the power he displays. That's it. Now, Ray, she actually has seen Endeavor and... Now, Ray, she actually has gone through enough healing, I want to say, enough time to actually somewhat be around Endeavor. Especially since she's basically here for her daughter. And, well, with Inko there, she does feel a bit better. Along with Endeavor's act- attitude actually seeming to have changed since the last time she's seen him. As they would sit down and have a well, nice dinner. And that is going to be where I leave things off of, guys. I do hope you enjoyed the series. And I will be picking from the cup in a minute. Alright, guys, let's see what we get. Let's see, what is this? Yes, brother. I see we have Space Marine Deku coming next. Well, that is going to be interesting. Ooh, I already have someone have a story for it. Perfect. Anyway, guys, that is going to be the next series, and, well, if you guys are still here, then the series actually might get interrupted probably halfway or partway through, because I am actually almost at 2K. And, well, I was going to somewhat see, I was going to make trailers to see if I should do this, since someone did ask me to, to make a trailer for a what if, and I was actually thinking about doing it. So if you guys would be interested in seeing a trailer for the 2K what ifs, basically I can put two on the channel, and you guys can basically like the videos to show which one you would rather want. And whenever I hit 2K, that is going to be the one I can pick. So if that sounds good to you guys, then please, re- well, basically please request for me to do trailers for the what ifs. Because I actually do have two picked out that people have been requesting a lot of. Along with, I can add in, well, I can throw in one because I actually did see it as a good story. Alright, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And thank you guys for watching these series. I actually do enjoy making them. Alright, goodbye guys.